Feeling overwhelmed by the amount of bar exam study that you're facing? That's not unusual. And in today's video tip, I'm gonna show you how you can eat the elephant one bite at a time. Stick around. I'm Jackson Mummy, the owner and founder of Celebration Bar Review. And for the past 30 years, I've helped thousands of bar takers, people just like you, to make their next bar exam the last bar exam. If you want to know more about how we do that, check out the links on this page after this video. Series. Today we're talking about tip number seven in our list of ways that you can make the next bar exam your last bar exam. And this tip might sound a little odd at first, but essentially we're just calling it how to eat an elephant. One of the problems that bar takers typically have is that they get what I call the big box of materials in the mail if they're doing a home study and a course like ours maybe, or when they go to first day of class to watch their video lectures in the big box bar reviews. And it's really an overwhelming stack of materials for most people. There are lots of books and then there's lectures and there's syllabus and there's questions and answers and just a lot of stuff to get through. And it seems like an incredible amount of work ahead people typically react to that set of materials in a couple of different ways, not all of which are necessarily good. One way that some people react is to become what I call super planners. They sit down and they try to figure out from today until the end of the bar exam everything that they have to do hour by hour, sometimes minute by minute, and it simply becomes overwhelming. In fact, a lot of these folks get analysis paralysis. It's almost impossible for them to get anything done because they begin to realize very quickly that the task is so overwhelming. And of course, as soon as the first of their self-imposed milestones are missed, which will inevitably happen, the student begins the process of the downward spiral of saying, oh, you know what, I'm behind. And the more the student begins to believe that they're behind, the worse they feel, the worse things go. And for a lot of people at that point, they simply become task avoidant. In other words, if there's something that you know that you're supposed to be doing, think about it right now, there's something else you were supposed to be doing, and you put it off for some reason, you know what happens. It doesn't go away usually, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It gets more frightening, maybe like a Monsters University uh, movie trailer, and it typically doesn't get done at all. People in that situation often go through all of that analysis and preparation, and then they don't end up getting very much accomplished, and they end up deferring the exam repeatedly, or not taking the exam, or the worst possible scenario, they go to take it, but they're not prepared for it. There's another group of people that get their course materials, whether it's online or in the big box, and they just blithely ignore it. They figure, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm smart, I can make this work. And they begin to do what I call cherry picking, which is to say that they take a lecture here or a reading there or question practice there, and they do that on their own. And because it's done out of order or out of sequence, at least in our course, they tend to get freaked out because suddenly the results aren't quite what they thought they should be, and now they don't know what to do. And so they become fixated on that subject, multi-state property or multi-state evidence, whatever it might be. They just get one of those subjects and they get crazy about it and they won't let go of it. They just keep chewing on it. And then in effect, what happens is they start to say, I've really got to know everything to pass the bar. I have to know all the exceptions to the hearsay rules. Yes, you do, but all things in their time and you don't have to learn them all at once. And yet, because this student has cherry-picked their way through the work, now they're starting to emotionally freak out. The people that take that kind of approach, that ignore the directions and just pick and choose on their own, tend to have another problem, and that is that there are major gaps in their studies. And like the first group, they start to become freaked out near the end of their studies, and then they start scrambling to try and figure out what's missing, what they have to do, and that typically results in less effective bar scores because there are things that they should have been doing all along that they weren't doing, and now they've got to go back and cover them again, or they miss them and never get to them, and so they go into the exam not completely prepared. What's the better way to function besides those extremes of trying to overdo everything or ignore everything? That's where eating the elephant comes into play. You've undoubtedly heard the story of the person that says, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. Trying to get ready for the bar exam, to me, looks like trying to eat an elephant. It can seem overwhelming. I think it's legitimate to ask, how can they expect to test me on three or four years of law school, on my entire legal career, in just a one or two day test? It's gotta be an incredible amount of material and I have to know everything, and therefore, I need to study day and night. I can't have a life. In fact, I'm gonna be a, such a pain in the neck that everyone that encounters me, that's all they'll know is that I'm studying for the bar exam for all of these many months, and by the way, I'm gonna be a martyr about the whole thing. 
You get the idea. As a result, people start to again get overwhelmed and the process breaks down for them. So the most effective way to study, the way to get the highest bar score, is to take the work in very small, discrete, bite-sized chunks. You should be studying with a plan in mind, and if you're in our course, we'll give you that plan. But the plan should literally be to just get a little bit done every single day. Now that'll surprise some of you. The people that try to do nothing during the week for a week or two, and then cram for eight hours on a single weekend, or cram for 16 hours on a weekend, well, typically they get bar exam indigestion. It's just too much material. They can't absorb it, much less remember it or understand it or know how to use it. And the result is going to be unfavorable for most of those people as well. The better result comes from the person that tries to do an hour or two hours of study every single day. Maybe take a day off on the weekend, but basically doing something every day. Now, as I've said before, it's best to set a routine. You remember that was one of our earlier tips. And when you get the routine, you get into the discipline of your studies, and in doing that, you'll get more done every single day. I constantly tell my students it's better to do a little every day than to try to do a lot in big doses. This kind of abstract material on the bar is not easily understood. It's theoretical, it's typically difficult to piece it all together and hard to keep it in your head. Now, you have to understand, I am absolutely not a believer in any way, shape, or form about the idea of memorization. So I'm not even talking about being a memorizer. If you were in one of the big box courses where they were teaching you mnemonics and memorization and having you make flashcards and going through all that craziness, which is completely worthless, but even if you were trying to do that and you did it for 16 hours in a weekend, that is incredibly unproductive work. In our course, where we're really trying to teach you a skill set and a set of principles that you can use to work through the exam, it is still ineffective to do too much studying at one time. Instead, it's much more effective to do little chunks of study. Some people will say, my schedule's so busy, Jackson, you just don't understand. Oh yeah, I do. I totally get busy. But the point is that if you'll set a time aside to do just a little bit, you'll make progress all the time. In other words, if you set a schedule and you say, I'm going to exercise uh, every morning for an hour, as we talked about in one of our earlier tips, and then after that, I'm going to do a half hour or 45 minutes or maybe even an hour of studying, you build that time into your day. You build it into your schedule, or maybe you do an hour of studying at your lunch away from the desk or away from the office, or you do an hour of listening to lectures on your commute into work or your commute home at night, or you plan on an hour or two after TV in the evening to do some studying at home. All of those things, those little hours here and there, add up to make a big difference, and they make a huge difference in your ability to get through the material and to be ready. Now, in a course like ours, we expect you to spend, on average, about 10 to 20 hours a week studying for a prolonged period of time, typically four to six months or more. For some of you, what I've just said is heresy. You're convinced that if you don't spend 50, 60, 70 hours a week, you can't be ready. And to those people, I would say, really quite gently, you ought to look at the statistics. Statistically, students that spend 10 to 20 hours a week have a pass rate that's above the state norm. That means 70, 80 percent or more. Whereas the people that do 60, 70 hours a week in a big box bar review have a pass rate that on average is about 35 to 40 percent. So the net result is that statistically, you don't get better by doing more. I know that's counterintuitive, but you don't eat the elephant in one big bite or two or three big bites or big meals. You will feel the pain. Now, the only way that this really works in our experience is to take small, progressive pieces of material. And the way that we do that is we give you those pieces in bite-sized chunks. We'll give you the menu or the order in which we want you to work, but we'll also tell you how long to spend doing each specific assignment. We do that because we know that people get a particular piece of information, say reading an outline, and they want to just labor over it. I recently had a phone call from a foreign trained attorney who was taking the bar exam with us. And this individual said, you don't really understand, Jackson. English isn't my first language, so I have to spend five times as much time as you say just to get through the assignment so I can read and memorize everything. <laughs> you can imagine what I said to that person in English, but the gist of it was, that's not how it works. You do a little bit, and then you learn by repetition. You go back to those subjects and you add a little bit more. Then you go back to those subjects later and you do a little bit more and add a little bit more. You hit it multiple times. That's the way our course is structured and that's what works. And by the way, if you're a photo reader or you're using some of the other tools that we provide, you can get through this material even faster. 
Now, the net result of all this is that by having these little bursts of study, you get a lot more accomplished than if you were trying to do it all over five or six uh, days or in 10 or 20 or 50 hours or whatever someone would put in. The reality is that you can talk yourself out of the bar exam by making it too big a task, making it huge. Maybe it's not even right of me to call it an elephant, except that I know that for most people, it really does look like it's mammoth. It's huge in size, but in truth, it's really not. It is manageable. I've seen people do this course in relatively little time and with relatively little disruption in their lives when they get a balance and a routine and a discipline. That's our tip for uh, today. You can improve your bar scores by doing a little bit daily, a whole lot more than by trying to do a lot in big chunks. And while that might be counterintuitive for some of you, I promise it will make a huge difference in your state of mind, your ability to study, and your ability to be successful. We'll see you again in our next tip. We're going to be talking about an important uh, item in tip number eight. It's called emotional maturity. I look forward to seeing you on that next tip. Thanks for being with me today.